sharp aha letter opener a very sharp letter opener and i'm not afraid to use it <sighs> jeez i uh i must be going crazy huh <laughs> i mean what was i thinking there's nothing here but books stories Are you even real? I mean, I know I've imagined people before, but never something as, as, as tangible as you. Wow, you are real. I, I, I can actually touch you. How is this even possible? I, I haven't seen anyone in, in, I, I don't even know how long it's been. How did you even get in here? That's the door you came through? The doors. They've never opened for anyone. Not even me. Show me. What door was it again? Come on, come on, come on. Please, open. Just when I thought I could finally get out. No, no, wait. It's gonna be okay, I promise. You're safe here. The, uh, the door handle, um, it, uh, it just gets jammed sometimes. Yeah, jammed. <sighs> you know, I, uh, <laughs> I probably shouldn't have reacted like that. And, you know, this library is so big! I mean, there's bound to be another door that'll let you out, right? I... uh... I probably shouldn't have said it like that. Uh, hey! Wait! I... I know this is a lot to handle right now. But... How about we do something to take your mind off of this? At least for a little bit. I know a good story always cheers me up. Trust me, it'll help. Yeah? Good, good, okay, um... Oh, we're by the cryptid section. One of my favorite books is here. Hmm, let's see... Ah, here we go! Siren's Cove! All right, come on. One of my favorite spots is nearby.
All right, all good? <laughs> Between you and me, this is one of the best spots in the library. Okay, let's see. Our story begins as the sun is set. Oh, before I forget, the books in this library are special. They're like these little fantastical worlds that have the power to suck you into them. Sometimes, when you really get into the story, it seems as though you're actually hearing it happen. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> okay, anyways, let's get into the story. Our story begins as the sun is setting. The seagulls crying out in the distance. The ocean's waves crashing against the docks. And there, fishermen bringing in the most mystical and fantastical catch they had ever found. Would you look at the size of her? This is surely going to be the catch of the day. Let go of me. Let me go. Let me go, you see harming humans. This won't end well for any of you. Shut to an outside eye, it may have looked like the fishermen had go. caught a young human woman in their net. But do not be mistaken. The fisherman had seen her kind before, and would bet the day's wage that she was a siren. Bring me here! Release me! Quickly! Quickly! Tighten the ropes, you fools! I can take you all! You don't scare me! Call for the others! The sirens please are deaf to the fisherman. They only see profit tangled in their net. Still, Lana cries out, desperate to find any kindness in their greedy eyes. Killer in the nets. No! No! Let me go! You're all the monsters. Not me! You can't take all of us, you slime creature. Can't you see you're hurting me? Shut her up for good. Tie a gag on her or something. If she sings, we're in serious trouble. Panic rose in Lana's throat as the fisherman attempted to gag her, taking away her main line of defense. Any hope she had of being released back into the ocean faded, causing anger to rush through her. Her eyes turned black, the tips of her fingers shredding into sharp, black claws. Lana shoots out her hand, gripping onto the throat of the fisherman and letting her song burst forth. To those that hear my song, listen to my voice, you will hear my heart. Drawing closer to me, See what I see. Let this hatred soar. Let it enter your hearts. Let it guide your voices. Deep in your soul, hear me. Fishermen are pulled into a trance, all of them falling under her spell. As they lose control of themselves, turning their anger and hatred towards each other, she untangles herself from the net. Take this! I never liked you anyway! Your shanties always sounded horrible! How dare you! Her tail starts to transform into two human legs, propelling her forward as she attempts to run. But seeing as this is only her second time using them, she ends up stumbling and falling over. A sharp rock edge sliced on his leg, making it harder for her to move away. Desperate, her only option was to stay quiet until she had enough strength to drag herself back out into the ocean. What she wasn't aware of, however, was that someone else had been listening to her song. A curious young man who had witnessed the events unfold. Hey, are you okay? Where did you come from? I mean, I, I heard something. Something that drew me over here. Oh, you're hurt. Uh, please, let me help. 
this might hurt a little. I have to wrap it tightly. Okay. Ow! Ow! Oh, sorry. <sighs> All right. That should do it. Can you stand? We need to get you out of here. Where are you taking me? Oh, I'm going to take you to the town doctor. He'll be able to wrap you up a lot nicer than this. Uh, come on, follow me. Elio offers her a hand. She's still hesitant. But at this point, he's clearly the better option to take her chances on. Elio takes a gentle hold of Lana, making sure she's ready before setting off towards the town. Besides your leg, are, are you hurt anywhere else? Why? Why? Uh, why what? Are you going to try and hurt me too? I won't. I promise. I didn't see you with them. How did you find me? I was walking along the coast when I heard a pretty song, so I followed the sound to see if I could see who was singing it. Then you saw what they were doing to me? If you saw, why didn't you help me? I, I ran to you the moment I saw you on the rocks, I swear. I guess that would make sense. But that singing I heard, was that you? Lana doesn't answer. He quickly understands that now was definitely not the best time. Uh, so, what happened back there? What do you mean? Uh, like you said, the fishermen were attacking you. But why? They're usually nice folk. Really? Because usually nice folk don't attack you for no reason. Yeah, I'm not really sure why they were all agitated today. Well, anyways, we're almost at the doctor's. How's your leg doing? It's a bit sore, but I'll be able to make it there just fine. <sighs> Thank you for helping me. Yeah, no problem. I'm happy to help. Besides, my mother would have killed me if she knew I left you there. Uh, come on, let's go. All right, we're here. Oh, uh, watch yourself on the stairs. They're a bit tricky to navigate. Elio tightens his grip around Lana's waist, pulling her closer to himself. She could smell the sea on him. It was comforting. Elio helps her up the stairs to a small rickety building, covered in algae and barnacles. When he opens a door, she is welcomed by the smell of medicine and fresh linens. Elio gently helps her to sit down, waiting for her to get comfortable. All right, I'm going to go talk to the doctor now. Uh, you make yourself comfortable, and I'll come back and get you when he's ready. All right. Lana looks around the office, noticing the sea has touched every part of it. Pictures and paintings of the ocean are on every wall. Corals and shells on every shelf. It was comforting. A stark difference to the inner turmoil Lana was feeling inside of her. <sighs> Lana finally feels like she can relax, slumping down into the chair. The pain in her leg had subsided to a dull pulse, not feeling as bothersome now. She closes her eyes, letting the time pass by quietly. Hey, miss, are you asleep? Huh? Hey. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, just the doctor's ready to see you. I I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to wake you up. No, no. <laughs> it's fine. Thank you. Um, could you uh, help me walk over? Yeah, no problem. Here, grab onto my shoulder. Elio helps Lana walk into the office the doctor waiting for them with a kind smile on his face. Lana wasn't sure what the doctor was doing, but by the end of it, her leg was cleaned and wrapped. He urges Elio to get some medicine in the town square, sending them on their way soon after. It 
didn't take long to reach the town square, but Lana soon wished she'd never left the doctor's office. There were monuments to the slaughter of sirens everywhere she looked, from the displays and storefronts to the tall banners billowing in the wind. In the center of the square stood a sailor of stone, proudly posing over a dying siren, her hands reaching out towards the sea in a gross display of human violence. Is something the matter? Uh, nothing. Nothing's the matter. Are you sure? Is your leg hurting again? My leg? Uh, yeah. You know, the one that you cut earlier today? You can lean on me if you need to. Oh, no. No, I'm fine. I promise. I must be feeling tired or something. Well, after we find the medicine we need, how about we find you somewhere less crowded to rest? Maybe find something to eat? Wouldn't that inconvenience you? You've already done so much for me anyway. To be honest, I feel bad for not being able to do more for you down at the beach. So I guess this is just as much for me as it is for you. So don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> I guess I can deal with it for now. What do you mean, deal with... Oh, I get it. You do? What do you get? You don't like crowds, do you? All right, then here. There's nothing in your hand, though. I meant hold on to my hand. That way, we can go through the crowd without getting separated. Lana does admit to herself that holding his hand would bring her some much-needed comfort. She gently holds his hand, letting him guide her into the square. They walk side by side, Elio scent of the sea washing over Lana like a protective veil, keeping her calm and feeling safe. Uh, by the way, my name's Elio. Elio. What a nice name. Thanks. Do you mind telling me your name? My... my name is Lana. Well, it's nice to meet you, Lana. You... <clears throat> you too. All right, make sure not to let go. The apothecary's shop is on the other end of the square. Lana nods, squeezing his hand tighter. As they walk through the square, she takes in all the sights and smells. The young children running around, playing. The adults walking about, having casual conversation. The smells of all different kinds of foods. Lana would have thought the scene endearing, if not for all the death lurking in the background. The dried up corals and the broken shells. The giant piles of sea creatures' corpses. The stench of waste flowing through the pipes into the sea. Lana leans in closer to Elio, holding onto his arm with her other hand now. The crowd's really bothering you, huh? Let's cut through here then. The shop's on the other side. Yes, please. <gasps> Lana abruptly halts, yanking Elio back with her. In front of her was something even more nerve-wracking than the square. Huh? It was an alleyway, kept dark by the awnings placed above the stalls. There were at least a dozen of them, all packed tightly together side by side. Each of them glimmering, with siren scales and hair. Vials of strange liquid were there too. One of them looking like blood. Sick to her stomach, Lana quickly turns. Lana? Letting go of Elio's Lana. hand and running off. Where are you going? Lana! <laughs> Lana runs to the town, tears streaming down her face. Anger and frustration rising through her as her eyes turn black and her black claws slowly come out. No, no. No, 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 not right now. Oh, no, please. Oh. Hey, Lana, slow down. Holy Poseidon, she's fast. Lana continues to run, now out of the town and headed towards the cliffside. She was so close to escaping, just a little bit further. Gotcha. No! Okay. No, don't touch me, stay away from me. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, sorry. I'm really sorry about that. You just left so quickly. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I just... Uh, I just need some space right now. There was just so much happening back there. And... And the truth is... No, it's okay. You don't have to explain it to me. 
It's my fault. I shouldn't have led you through the square. I'm sorry. I didn't think the crowds would spook you so badly. I should have listened to you when you said that they didn't make you comfortable. Honestly, I don't even like crowds either. But I was so focused on you. <sighs> it wasn't medicine, the crowds. I never thought to check up on you and oh my gosh, the alleyway was so tightly packed. I should have Elio. known that it was going to be worse than the marketplace and I didn't even stop to think about Elio. Uh, yeah. It's fine. It wasn't the crowds that bothered me. It wasn't? No. It was something else. What was it? Everywhere I looked, we were surrounded by death and pollution. Everything I find beautiful about the sea, it was just... destroyed. Oh. A sense of sadness washes over Lana, drowning out the fear and anger. She felt defeated. Her eyes began to change back, her claws retracting. She sits on the edge of the cliff, letting her feet hang off the edge. Elia sits down next to her. There are people in this town who love the sea. People who respect it. Yeah? Like who? Well, the doctor for one. The sea helps him calm down after the stressful days he has. I see him down by the beach sometimes, painting the view. So those paintings were his? Yeah. And the coral you saw? They are from the town bakers. One of them likes to regrow them when they wash up on shore. That's sweet. There's also a lot of fishermen that bring in waste with their daily catch. They probably thought I was sea waste. Huh? It's nothing. So what about you? Do you like the sea? I apprentice under a man who goes on expeditions to study the sea. It was something my parents did when I was young. And they taught me that the sea isn't something to be feared, but to be respected. And they were right, too. There's something about the sea that's just so... beautiful. Elio glances over at Lana, the sight taking his breath away. The moonlight was hitting her just right. The blues of her eyes crystal clear. Her skin glowing. And the silk of her dress soft and smooth. She reminded him of a gentle ocean wave. It was mesmerizing. You're beautiful. What? Uh, what? You just called me beautiful. Uh, what? Did I? I meant to say, what do you find beautiful about the sea? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I love to watch schools of fish swim by, and the large coral reefs by my home. I also love to sing with my sisters and feel the sea breeze brush through my hair. Oh, but my most favorite thing about the sea is the way the sun shines down through the water. Wow. All of that sounds amazing. It is. So you have sisters? I do too. She raised me ever since I was... Elio? Elio stiffens when he hears the voice, quickly getting up and standing in front of Lana. Lana stands up as well, looking over from behind Elio's back. There you are. Mara? What are you doing out this late? I, I thought you'd be home. I was looking for you. You didn't come home yet, and I got nervous. Anyways, let's head back home. I made your favorite... Elio, who's that standing behind you? Oh, uh, this is Lana. We met earlier today. Lana? The name doesn't sound familiar. That's because she's new in town. She's from, uh... She's... Lana, this is my sister Mara. It's nice to meet you. Mara glares at Lana before looking back at Elio with a sweet gaze. So this is why you're late. You met a girl. Mara stands in between Elio and Lana now, inching closer to Lana, a look of disapproval etched on her face. When did you come into town? I'm surprised I didn't hear about it. I always know what's going on around here. I came this morning. I was brought here by some fishermen. Oh? How strange. I did hear in town that the fishermen brought in something fascinating. No one ever mentioned a girl being their catch of the day. Mara, stop. You're making her uncomfortable. She's been through a lot today. She doesn't need you interrogating her. Mara turns, fixing her glare back on her brother now. 
It's something bitter and angry. Why is it wrong of me to ask her what she's doing here? Not only did she just magically appear out of nowhere, but she arrived here with the fishermen. They always go out to the middle of the sea. How on earth could she have gotten on their ships? I... I don't know. Well, there has to be an explanation for it, right, Lana? Lana was starting to get nervous. Flashes of the morning's events running through her head. She starts to back up slowly, feeling cornered by the situation. Mara closes the distance between them, anger radiating from her. A lot of people have tried to take advantage of Elio, especially since his heart is in the right place. That's why he needs me to protect him. I... I don't get taken advantage of. Not now, Elio. You. What intentions do you have with him? Why are you in our town? I... I don't have any intentions. I was just helped by Elio when I got injured at the beach. I was receiving his kindness. That's all. Elio, what were you doing at the beach? Especially after I've warned you how dangerous the sea can be. I can handle myself, Mara. Besides, she was stranded by the rocks, bleeding. You'd rather I turn my back on her? Yes. Elio, you know nothing about her but her name. Anything the sea brings in is dangerous. How could you say that? Mara, this isn't like you. Elio, why can't you understand that I'm doing all of this to protect you? Why must you be so insistent on traveling the seas like our parents? Do you want to end up like them? Lost at the bottom of it? Never returning to their children? No, of course not. But I learned from them that the sea is something to respect, not something to fear. Oh, don't be so naive. It causes nothing but death and destruction. The people of this town know that well enough. It's the only reason why I can tolerate living here. The people of this town are stuck in the past. They believe in the siren legends for crying out loud. Lana stiffened at the mention of sirens. Her entire body wound up tight. Fear starts to crawl up her skin, dreading the direction this conversation was going in. Mara notices the sudden shift in Lana's demeanor, turning her attention back to her. Tell me, Lana... Do you know of the legends in this area? The legends? I, I'm i not quite sure I know what you're talking about. Well, you see, there are tales that out past the shore and into the horizon is a giant formation of rocks. Some say that it looks like a cave, a little hideaway from the rest of the world. They say if you venture that far out over the water, you'll never be heard from again. There are evil creatures out there, murderous beings. It's all true, you know. Our parents used to travel those waters all the time, chasing fantasy dreams about the sea. Yet one day, they never returned. The only thing found was the mast of their ship, floating aimlessly out in the deep waters, and I believe that place to be real. Do you know what we call that place? I don't know. Mara. That's enough. Siren's Cove. Siren's Cove. Do you know why we call it that? N no. Why? Why do you call it that? Because of pretty little sea witches like you. What are you talking about? Elio, I can explain. Don't let her sweet voice fool you. Her kind tells lies. You don't know anything about my kind. That's where you're wrong, Siren. I know everything. Before Lana could even react, Mara crashed into her like a vengeful wave, knocking her over the edge of the cliff and watching as she plummeted into the ocean below. Elio rushes forward, trying to grab her, but Mara holds him back. Lana! No, 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 no! Elio, no! It's too dangerous. You might fall over the edge like she did. Elio whips around to face Mara. Tears streaming down his face as he yanks himself away from her. What the hell was that? You... Uh, you killed her! She was a siren, Elio. That thing killed our parents. I only did what I had to do. You'll understand eventually. Understand? She was my friend. I finally met somebody that loved the ocean as much as I did. Enough, Elio. We're going back home. You will get over her. No. 
I'm not letting you have authority over me anymore. God, are you even my sister? Of course I am. I do everything for us so that nothing can harm this family. You are not my family anymore. You just killed someone. Over what? Some stupid legend? You... She's done something to you, hasn't she? My Elio would never question me. He would never turn his back on me. Mara, I'm sorry. I can't be here anymore. I can't be around you anymore. Elio runs away, sprinting down the path leading to the base of the cliff. Lana falling to her death, haunting his mind. Mara slumps to the ground, staring at her hands. Shocked that her brother would choose that... that creature, that thing over her. The one person who was always on his side. I won't lose to her. I couldn't save my parents. But I will save my brother. Elio searches every inch of the shore by the cliffs, looking for any sign that Lana might have survived the fall. But there was nothing. It was as if she had disappeared into thin air. Elio collapses into the sand, feeling broken and defeated as he lets the waves crash into him. Lana... I'm... I'm so sorry. But before he could give up, a strange and haunting song reached his ears. To those that hear my song, that hear my voice, let you hear my heart. Drawing closer to me, see what I see. Mend me as I will to you. Give me your heart, give me your voice. Deep in your soul, hear me reaching out to you. Bring me joy. Elio quickly gets up, sprinting in the direction of the song. His lungs burn as the cold air rushes past him. Elio knew that song. It was the same song he heard earlier that day when he found... Lana! Elio? What are you... <laughs> <laughs> Lana gets cut off as Elio tackles her in a hug. Both of them were relieved that the other was safe. You're alive! Uh, yep. Definitely alive. Elio lets go of Lana, checking over her to see if she's hurt anywhere. Lana, how on earth did you survive that fall? It was at least a hundred feet down to the ocean. And you can be honest with me this time. Oh, well I... um... I... flew? You flew? Yep. Like... flew flew? Yeah. Wings and all. Huh. I didn't know sirens had wings. Can you tell me more about them? Uh, about you? Sure. They say that if a woman's heart breaks and she gives herself to the sea, she's reborn as a siren. If her heart is pure, she's granted the ability to keep her soul. If it isn't, her soul is the price of her being reborn. Either way, she can entice wandering souls with her voice. And what happens once they're drawn in? Depends. Those of us that have our souls are different. Those that don't have their souls are like predators. The travelers, their prey. Also, I'm pretty sure I still have my soul so you don't have to worry about me eating you. Besides, you don't seem to get caught under my spell when I sing. <laughs> Well, do you live in Siren's Cove? 
I do. Then it really does exist. Sirens exist. Does that mean... Yes. Does that mean my sister was right? Did you kill my parents? No! I would never hurt a human. My sisters and I have kept our distance from them. We only use our songs to guide them away from the cove. <sighs> I knew you weren't evil. I guess I just had to check. You know, just in case. I understand. But even though my sisters and I weren't the cause of your parents' death, that doesn't mean another siren hadn't taken the opportunity. Either way, I'm so sorry for your loss. Oh, uh, thank you. Lana? Elio? You said that the siren song can lure people in, yet every time I've heard you sing, nothing's happened to me. Why? They say that if we sing our song and the listener doesn't become entranced, then they may be our true love. Someone that can truly reach our hearts. Oh? Then are we each other's true love? <sighs> Lana wasn't amused. No. Although, I guess it's true that you haven't been put under my spell when I sing. Damn. My first love ended as quickly as it began. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't realize I made such a lasting impression on you. I wouldn't say lasting, but I would be sad to see you leave. I'd rather you stay here. I wouldn't mind staying with you. But this town... Yeah, no. <laughs> Guess I'll take what I can get. Elio stretches out his hands, putting one of them over hers. Lana lets it happen, feeling a fuzzy warmth spread through her. They both stare out at the sea, feeling content and safe. My parents weren't enough for you? Now you're after my brother too? Lana and Elio both jump, their attention immediately turning to Mara, who is angrily watching them. Elio moves to stand in front of Lana, reaching back to keep her behind him. What are you doing here? Saving you! Our parents had an unhealthy obsession with the sea. Never caring about us, always running off to go on their voyages. And here you are, leaving me like they did all those years ago. It was never like that. I'll give you one last chance. Are you choosing me or her? Why would you even make me do that? I will not have you put me through the same thing our parents put me through. So tell me right now, are you choosing her? Go be with your sister. She needs you. Lana, please. What are you whispering to him, you monster? Mara, calm down. I will not have this happen to me again. If you're really going to choose her over me, then I'll just have to get rid of her myself. Mara yells angrily, <gasps> rushing towards Lana and grabbing onto her hair. She slams Lana into the beach, Help! lunging towards Stay her. Elio grabs onto Mara before she can do any more damage, trying to hold her back. But the feeling of fear and anxiety explode inside of Lana right then, causing her to change forms abruptly. Slight cracking noises are heard as she shifts, fingertips turning black and stretching in the claws. Black crow-like wings stretch out from her back, her eyes turning black as well. She releases a bird-like screech, charging her way towards Mara. She yanks Mara out of Elio's arms, throwing her a distance away. With another screech, Lana flies over to Mara, clutching her throat, and as she chokes her, Lana digs her claws deeper and deeper in Amara's throat. Lana? No, no, no. Let her go. I told you. I knew you sirens were murderers. Elio, run. I'll hold her off. You're the murderer. You pushed me off that cliff with no remorse. Yet you won't die. Mara lunges her hands forward, scratching and digging her nails into Lana's face, making her loosen her grip and allowing Mara to turn the tables. She pins down Lana, digging her knees into the siren's wings. Mara starts to choke Lana now, putting all of her aggression into it. Die! 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 Just leave us alone! Don't take my brother away from me! You caused my parents' death. I won't let you cause his Get too! Get off me! I would never hurt Elio. I never hurt your parents. Mara, stop. No one's going to die. 
Just let her go. Please, she'll leave. Just let her go. Elio pulls his sister off of the siren, hugging her tightly to himself. Mara struggles against him, trying to lunge for Lana. You can't have him. He's my brother. I won't let you have him. I'll kill you. I won't let you leave alive. You don't own him. He's capable of choosing what he wants for himself. He chose to help me. He chose to be my friend. He chose me after you pushed me off that cliff. I gave him so much of myself. My life, my time, my love. I gave him everything. He's all I have left. Mara. Elio, let's kill her together. Once she's gone, we can be a family again. Elio loosens his grip on his sister, letting her slump to the ground. The sister he grew up with, who took care of him and loved him, who kept him warm and safe. She was gone, replaced by this broken soul, lost to hysteria. Elio felt his heart breaking more and more, already missing the person his sister used to be. So that's it. You're going to leave me for her as well? Go die then. Leave! If you won't choose me, then I don't want you in my life. You're just like our parents, choosing the sea over everything else! Lana feels guilt overshadow her other emotions, changing her back into her human form. She walks over to Elio, gently holding his hand. They watch as Mara beats her hands into the sand over and over again, screaming and crying. Elio's tears don't stop flowing, squeezing Lana's hand for reassurance. All right, Mara. I'll leave. You won't ever have to see me again. The pain I've caused you, the pain our parents caused you, I'll take it with me. It always takes everything away from me. It takes everything away! As Mara continues to dig into the sand, ranting about the sea, Elio looks at Lana. Pain and heartbreak are etched into his eyes, the boy giving her a silent plea to take it all away. Lana nods, leading Elio towards the water. Once her feet touch the waves, she transforms back into her original siren form. Elio reaches down and picks Lana up, carrying her deeper into the ocean. Mara watches as Lana cups her brother's face, placing a gentle kiss on his lips. No matter how deep you go into the water, just focus on me and breathe, okay? Only on you. Mara watches the scene unfold, horrified at the fact that her brother was being dragged away from her. She rushes forward in a hurry, but stops short, the churning waves mimicking the emotions inside of her. Elio and Lana continue their descent, neither looking back. Mara lets out the pain in her grotesque and depressing wail, tears streaming down her face. Yet no matter how hard Mara cried out for her lost family, they would never return to her. Her mother, father, and now brother, all lost to the sea, to Siren's Cove. Gosh, I really love that story. The ending always throws me for a loop. So, what do you think? Pretty exciting, right? <laughs> and not just this one. There are so many stories in the li- Obviously, this one wasn't the best one to start you off with, huh? <sighs> but, uh, hey. Everything's going to be okay. I promise that once you're in the walls of the library, you're safe. Besides, you have me now. And, uh, I'll always be here whenever you need me. Well, you're welcome to roam wherever you like. And trust me, there are so many great stories for you to discover. So, uh, why don't I find you something else to read? Anything you're interested in? 
Okay, okay, gotcha. Uh, thanks for the input. Something lighter it is. You stay right here. I'll be right back with something you'll definitely enjoy.